and, and, and if the truth be known, very few entrepreneurs probably would not be considered, if you consider how they start off, not be rule. Unless someone gave you a silver platter in the beginning, most of us have a rule mentality about what we start off with. In other words, we start off with very little, we're it, and we're working hard to get it done. And uh, it seems like we're in our own little country, our own little rural area, uh, until someone finally identifies us so we get to somebody's uh, environment that says, hey, I like that idea, let's pull it up. Other than that, you're working in your little province, and that's it. So that concept of rurality, a rule, is, 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 is very real for all entrepreneurs, I believe. The difference is that you're focusing on it, and that may be a very good strength uh, to look at. Now, what kind of strategies would I recommend? One I just gave you, and, and, and that one would be the strategy of doing a SWOT analysis. In other words, doing your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And, and, and again, I, I suggest you get a book on that and look at that, because that's an important piece. Generally, we try to do SWOT analysis on uh, organizations, and we get them all together. But we forget that the components within the organization, which are ourselves, should also have a SWOT analysis done so that we understand what I really bring to the table. Not what people say I bring to the table. Because other people will look at you and say, oh, he's handsome, he's this, she's that, she's that. But you know for real who you are, what you are, and what you bring to the table. And so based on that, uh, I would suggest that we take a good hard look at ourselves. And I'm about to wind up some of this, wind it down, but uh, let, me, let me give you a couple more points. Uh, I would also say think of things as being systems. Never think of yourself operating in a rural environment and that's it. Remember, you're connected to that urban world. You're connected to the bigger pot in ways that you may not have thought about until you sit down and really start to think about how do I impact everything else, regardless of what you're doing. Uh, so therefore, if you think of everything as a system, and that system will broaden itself more and more, and let me give you a very simplistic example of the system's approach, is that you've got input, You've got something happens in the middle, we sometimes call that the black box or the integration box or, or, or the change box, and then you've got output. Now if you know your strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities and threats, you know what you have in the inbox right here. You can't always decide what's in that middle piece, but you can influence it by what you put in it. If I put wood chips in it, or if I put logs in it, and it come out as wood chips, I can probably surmise that there's something that's grinding very hard in there. If I put it in there, it comes out as lumber, and I can say there's something slicing in there. I mean, so I can get an idea of what's happening. But that's generally after it comes out uh, uh, in, in, in terms of the, the end product. Because naturally, there's something about this black box or this, this uh, piece that's doing the integration that I know about before I get started. But if you think of everything that way, you'll find how you are, in fact, connected to the bigger piece of all of this. What's your input? What happens to it? And the product you put out who can use that product? Where can it go? How far can it go? Uh, what do I have to do to improve it to make certain that it's going to be used by everyone? But again, I've got to be able to plan, organize, lead, and control people, places, and things appropriately uh, to get that done. So again, I'm looking at making, whether you're in a rural environment or an urban environment, in this case rural entrepreneurship, making certain that we are both efficient and effective. Not only am I going to hit the target, but I'm going to hit it with the least amount of resources because that brings me the max amount of return in that whole systems analysis there. My next question would be, are you ready to be a manager? Now I said everybody's a manager. I know I shared that with you and I do believe that. Uh, but are you really ready to be an efficient, effective manager? And how do you know that? I think if you did a good SWOT analysis, that will help out. Uh, it, it doesn't hurt to do a couple of personality assessments. You know, seriously, we, you know, I've got individuals who really, when they get in front of an audience, they can move. But when they start networking, they stand in the, in the corner like a wallflower. So the question, are they introverts or are they extroverts? And why is that important to know? Uh, well, that's part of your strengths and your weaknesses. If I know that I'm an introvert, then I'm gonna package myself for maximum effective and efficiency by being able to either compensate for that or put myself in environments that's gonna make me produce the max output in the system that we're talking about. 
And, and, and so uh, I tell folks a couple of tools that you really want to look at is the SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, and opportunity. Uh, you want to take a look at maybe something like a Myers-Briggs uh, and there are a lot of free assessments out there and uh, I'll put a couple of those at the end of the slides that you can go to and actually do and do a self-assessment. You don't need anybody outside to help you with any things I'm talking about where it talks about whether your, 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 your primary character is introverted or extroverted and what you might do to uh, overcome those if it's going to be a hindrance for the business that you're working in uh, from that, as, that perspective. And you might do something on communications. I don't think you can be good managers without being good communicators. Uh, whether that means good listeners, good speakers, good writers, any of those. Uh, so what I suggest, and there's some good assessments too, and, and, and again at the end of the slides you'll see that where I've made some notes about, hey, from a communication standpoint, here's some very basics. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a, a desk reference to tell you how to write a letter or how to write a book. I mean, uh, not necessarily a book. A book would be fine, but how to write a letter or how to send a memo or any other notes there. Because that shows who you are without you being there. And it's important. And I know we've got the technology that will correct all the grammar. That's great. But if the content still doesn't tell me what I need to tell me, we, we're still not going to do business. And this can make you a very effective entrepreneur without all of the other things getting in the way. So take a look at those, and also, uh, as I back up a little bit and summarize, know the history of what you're doing. Not just the history of management, I started off talking about that, but know your history. Know who you are, know where you came from. In the beginning, I talked a little bit about myself. I talked about being in the military, I talked about traveling, I talked about courses I taught. Uh, that's not just the boast, but that's also let you know that if you want to use my services, I bring something to the table up front. And I don't want you to have to guess what those things are. So therefore, when you are going out as an entrepreneur, think about what your historical background is. What do you bring into the table? In addition to your, your weaknesses and your strengths and, and maybe those opportunities and threats that may be presented to you as a result of that, uh, they may open the door. And not everybody's going to like the fact that I'm military. They may not like my color. They may not like how my stance, anything, but there are some who will. And I would rather those who like what I have in my bag to come and say, hey, I'm interested in that, versus us not being effective or efficient by spinning our wheels with those who may not have that. And I think you will find that as you develop that about yourself, you become more confident and you draw in the right clientele that you can truly service and want to use your service and that you can network with to help build your organization the way it needs to be built. Let me see if I missed anything I need to tell you and hopefully I get a chance to come back and share some more with you. Uh, I love this business of management. Uh, again, uh, I do sit on a couple of boards uh, that deal with both management and leadership. I have a leadership uh, uh, forum that I, I work with every year uh, and I also have uh, young students who we call Collegiate 100 that I work with. Uh, I think they bring a lot to the table uh, and also help me keep young and thinking about how do I broaden this? Uh, take some other resources and, and try and read those. You don't have to pay for them. Uh, again, some of the stuff I'm going to share with you, it's all free. And some of it, you can go to the libraries and get, whether it's uh, the, the Harvard Business Review, The Economist, or the Success Magazine, or any of those that give very good information that can help motivate you and develop you to be the best entrepreneur in a rural environment or any environment that exists. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any other questions, uh, you know how to get in touch with me. The information is there. I would be glad to answer those or, or the, the formal setup for sending information back. Please do that. Uh, and I want to thank you for everything.